I'm referring to a diagram over here that I thought was pretty helpful. Um, your instrument cluster, your instrument panel, they call it, is a display for you to see a, a bunch of things. One of them being the speed and how many miles you have achieved. This is digital, obviously. Most of us now is digital where it tells you how many miles in digital form, right? No more analog. So this diagram out of this textbook that I was discussing with uh, someone who left a, a very um, intelligent uh, comment, which I enjoyed, um, this is digital. How does it know the miles? How do we know the miles? How do we know the speed? In digital format, digital form. Well, off the transaxle, there's the speed, right? The tr transmission is, is, is turning, uh, transaxle for front wheel drive, you know, transmission for, 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 for the rear wheel drive, doesn't make a difference. There's still, shafts are still turning, input shaft, output shaft, they're still turning. In between that is a Hall effect sensor. And that gives you in return pulses. Now, the data over here, 40,000 pulses per mile. How do you know how many miles you went? Let's say you took a trip from New York to Florida, right? Let's say a thousand miles, whatever it is. How does it calculate that? Number one. Number two, let's say you want to take a trip again, but you want to make stops for gas or, or for a resting, rest, rest spots and all that. Let's say you want to program it every, you know what? Every hundred miles will stop at a, at a gas stop uh, and will We'll take a rest, whatever. So you program that. After 20 miles, it'll tell you. Uh, I'm sorry, after 100 miles. This, 40,000 pulses per mile. This is the, is the engine control module. This is the brain, right? We said. This is the body control module. And this is obviously the instrument cluster. If you look at it, you'll see this one is getting information from this, from the transmission. How many pulses per mile to this computer? The computer takes this information and gives this information also to the instrument cluster, but also is communicating with this one, the body control module. This is also taking the information. So let's start from, from start. It's because it's, it's a little confusing. If 40,000 pulses equal a mile, how much is half a mile? 20,000 pulses. So how much then is a quarter? 10,000 miles, 10,000 pulses. That's how it knows. It counts it and they say, okay, now it knows how many miles. You ever go in a, t in a taxi, New York taxi, whatever it is, and then you have, it tells you how many miles and you pay per mile. How does it know that? Speed sensors, right? So again, 40,000 pulses per mile. Half a mile is 20,000 per mile. Uh, half, a, half a mile, half a mile. It gives this information to him and he knows and he... And then they display it on this, telling you, okay, now the, now the clock changes. Now the clock changes. It changes again and again and again per miles. Uh, the speed, again, we take it. The speed is a little difficult because it's, it, it, it takes the speed, the pulses, and it changes it to a frequency. And it divides it by two. So let's say 40,000 it'll divide it by two roughly 20,000 let's say it'll give you a certain frequency the more faster you're turning the more obviously the sensor will de de detect it the more pulses the more the the lower the frequency the lower the frequency the lower the uh, the lower the speed the higher the frequency that it converted to the higher the speed so let's say you're going 10 miles an hour that'll be a low frequency let's say you're going uh, uh, 80 miles an hour obviously it'll be a much higher frequency that's how it knows it gives this information to him and tell him okay he's going 10 miles an hour 20 miles an hour 30 miles an hour what's interesting to note is that the speed the speedometer speedometer digital always gives you the 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 number even if you're at even let's say you're not moving obviously you're at zero miles per hour it'll still tell, tell you zero it won't start counting only by one mile two mile three mile you understand what i'm saying so it'll even if you're at zero and not moving at all it'll still show you zero mile per hour that's it that's i think it's interesting part of it so this is how it works and this is how it goes on so if you have a problem with this uh with the display you're not getting miles 
Again, could be this, could be the wheel speed sensor, obviously. Let's go to another one that I think is pretty interesting. And I think what I'll do is maybe I'll do a chapter on a video, a chapter from a video from this book, because I have many comments that this book is very um, informative. And like I said, years ago, I didn't have YouTube. I didn't have um, people that I worked with who knew electronics, and we all did me mechanical, obviously, but I had electronics background before, and uh, I referred to this, to all my problems, to this textbook. Um, those days were difficult, like I just commented. But anyway, same theory applies. Whether it's analog or digital, we still have to know the speed. We still have to know how many miles. So it's the same theory, same theory. So, but more computers and more problems and more headaches. Now, there are switches all over here, warning lights. How many, how many times you close that door, you open the door, you leave the lights on, the, the chimes go on and off. Sometimes it's already, it, it's, it, it's overkill, isn't it? Well, the switches over here dictate it. So let's say, this instrument cluster we just discussing before it shows you okay the cargo gate is open or the door is open or whatever brake uh, you put the, the you when you try moving let's say and, oh I forgot the par the pocket brake is still on it gives you that information let's say you left the the trunk the trunk um, the trunk open the trunk door open right well the light is gonna stay on then okay so if you see what exactly what they tell you there's a switch that goes to this. Lift gate open warning. See? It tells you that the lift gate is open. Switch close with lift gate open. It does the opposite. And this is why I went over all these videos. This does the opposite. This does the opposite. You see it open in the open position. That's because the gate is closed. When the gate when the gate opens, guess what? Now you're connected to ground. It receives a ground signal. The light goes on. It needs a ground to make this go on. Right? So obviously it's going from plus, B plus, everything's going from B plus through this lamp uh, bulb to light it. And when does it light? It needs a ground. It's going to get a ground when it, guess what? When you open that door. So it's going to tell you cargo door open. Same thing with this, with the brake, uh, with the brake, with the brakes. Uh, when you left the brakes on, that switch is going to close, going to give a ground path to this light, and you're going to hear about it, or you're going to see it visually right now let's go to the other one oil pressure switches open with oil pressure above uh, 5 psi this opens this normally it looks like it's closed it, when it's closed you have a problem that means you'll have to let you have less than 5 psi pressure oil pressure it's not enough just to look at the at the, at the oil if you have oil you have to look at the oil pressure you cannot be below a certain amount because obviously, then you're gonna have problems with uh, uh, with oil getting to your to the to the through the engine and, and the galleries and all that. So obviously, it's an important. It, this I said it's called the warning system. It's warning you about something, right? It's not gonna warn you that the air conditioning is not is not working because that's a luxury, right? But oil in in the in the engine is a necessity. And leaving the light on when you when the, when the door is still open, well, then you'll find out the next morning when the battery is drained. So anyway, when the oil or oil is beneath a certain amount of pressure, this closes and gives a, a, a ground and this lights. Same thing for the coolant temperature. Switch close when hot. When this is very hot, this will give it a ground and it'll light this bulb. And so on and so on and so on. So anyway... Anyway, I think with the seat with the seat belts, there's the parking brake that we were talking about. You left the parking brake; it's in the closed position. It gives the ground to the bulb, and boom, there it goes on. Same thing. The belts indicator it tells you if you don't have your safety belts, and how many times uh, say uh, 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 belt? Yeah, uh, seat belt, seat belt, seat belts on, right? You don't have the seat belts on, and guess what happens again? Then the same thing. Then it has over here called the timer circuit. It waits and waits and waits. It, and then it, it waits until if you don't if it's not on, you're going to hear about it with bells and chimes and all that and the warning buzzer. So it gives you at least some time to to fasten up, so to say. So anyway, I thought this was interesting. Like I said, and like I said, even twenty over like I said twenty years ago, look what they're using. Look, they're using those days a fluke meter. 
that I'm using nowadays that I've been using for life. This is the this is the best meter you can find this on eBay. Much cheaper, believe me, much cheaper than years ago. It is it is the best I've. You see the videos that I make, right? With fluke meter, minimum, maximum, the hold. You can detect the pulse. You, I'll show you uh, for the for the alternator and a uh, and a quick point about the alternator. Why I make a video about the alternator? There's thousands of videos on the alternator. Those alternators had regulators internal in the alternator. So all you had to do is just measure the voltage. If it's not if it's not regulated or constant, guess what? Change the alternator, no problem. Not so. Now we have computerized alternator. The computer controls the on and off time of the rotor field current. Like I stress the point. You can't just assume it's the alternator. Like I had a customer, two alternators were changed. He was complaining. I said, I'll try my best. I'll try my best. It was a computer problem, obviously. So you have to understand, computer controls the alternator. The on and off time, when it controls on and off time, it controls the current that goes to the accessories and to charge the battery and all these things. So it's no more like, okay, let me just measure the output of the alternator, 14 volts, okay, or if it's not working, it'll be 12 volts or 11 volts, whatever it is. Alternator is not good, let me change it. Those were the old school days. It's not like that anymore. It's, it's computerized. That's why you have to... You have to get advanced and you have to understand what's going on. Go to my channel, Joe, Electronic Schematics for Auto. Please see other videos about low testing batteries, about alternators, about relays in circuit. No reason to take out an uh, a relay.